All right, so today we're gonna uh, be doing a watercolor of a flower. We're gonna do an enlargement. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do the enlargement. We've already covered the watercolor technique. So most of this is gonna focus on the enlargement and I may time-lapse the watercolor at the end. Uh, so yeah, first thing we gotta do is set up our format. This is gonna be the same as usual. So I've got my eight by 10 plastic sheet and I'm going to mark it at five inches here. And here, I've still got some of my ink. You can see where I marked it last time. If you want to make things easier, you can just not erase the ends of your lines when you clean your sheet off. And here. And opposite. All right. Cool. Now we're going to connect those. Just going to go like this. Go from here to here, straight down. Go the other way. Very important today, we're going to get the diagonals. All right. So diagonals, I'm just going to connect the corner and the center here. Draw that in. Going this way as well. Flip that over. I'm having a hard time getting that today. There we are. Flip that over. Here. And here. All right, so now our viewfinder is all set up. Put that aside. So now I'm gonna get a piece of watercolor paper this watercolor paper today is 15 by 11 inches. Yeah. Um, so what I want to do is set up my format. Now today, instead of making it the same size like I've been doing, I am going to make it bigger, but I need to make it proportional. So one way to make it proportional is to multiply. So you measure this side and multiply it by a number. You can multiply it by any number larger than one if you want to make it bigger. Uh, so you could do 1.5, you could do two, just depending on how much larger you want it to be. It's going to make this dimension that much larger. All right. And you have to multiply this one by the same number, and then you'll make uh, the height um, that number. So you can do it with math, um, but I'm going to show you a little trick for doing it today. So what we want to do is put this up kind of in the corner here. And we want to grab a pencil. Put my pencils away. Mm -mm -mm. An uncharacteristic act of cleanliness. I put my pencils away. All right, here we go. I'm going to use a light pencil for this. Uh, so let's move it up to the corner. So we want to figure out like how big we want the margin to be. All right. So all I'm going to do here, get that all square. Just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't need to be measured necessarily. I'm just going to mark where the corner is. All right. So now I want to establish kind of that same margin. So I'm just looking at the side margin here. I'm just going to draw that in. So just in the corner and the side here. And what I have to do is make it so that the opposite corner here follows this diagonal, okay? So if you have a flat table, you can just set this down. I'm gonna have to do a little finger gymnastics. But I wanna extend this diagonal, see now? So I need to follow this diagonal and then figure out where the diagonal intersects with the other desired margin right there. So from there, I just go straight over. I wanna line this up need to make sure it is parallel to the bottom of the paper here. 
and I go straight across. And then I can just take this straight down from here. As long as everything looks nice and square, you should be all right. You should probably be able to eyeball this. But if you're having trouble, just measure. Just measure exactly how big you want it to be. I'm just kind of eyeballing, trying to keep the edge of the ruler parallel to the edge of the paper there. All right, so now, this big box on my watercolor paper should be or, uh, proportional, there we are, to this viewfinder here. Let me turn on my light. There. Forgot to turn my light on, so maybe you can see it a little better. Uh, the line is light, but yeah. So now we've got proportional boxes uh, to start with. Um, so let's see. finish my diagonals. So this might be a good situation for a longer ruler. Or some type of long straight edge. So what I'm going to do here is use another little trick. Oh man, that ruler might be too long. It's running into my wall. Hold on, I'm going to scoot. Scoot my whole board back a little. There we go. All right. So I don't want to measure this to find the middle. So I'm going to use kind of the opposite technique here. I'm going to connect my corners. All right. And then I'm going to go straight through. Now I need to make sure this line is horizontal. If it's off, I'm going to be sad. Um, if you want to, you could measure and check it. I'm going to be bold and daring. If you had a square, you could use that and make it square to the paper. That looks close enough. I think that should be fine. And I'm going to use my shorter ruler. I'm going to run into the wall if I don't. So that's what's up there. All right. So now I've got it all set up to match my viewfinder. All right, so with an enlargement, I'm not gonna be able to measure the same way I was able to previously. It's not gonna be a direct comparison because it's gonna get bigger when it goes over here. So I have to look at proportions instead of actual measurements. Uh, but otherwise I can use it largely the same. Um, so I'm gonna go over and trace my flower onto my viewfinder. All right, so I'm not sure about showing this. I've got my flower laid out. I'm gonna take my viewfinder and position it uh, so that the flower is filling a decent amount of space here. Uh, so I want to try to get it up close. If your flower is small, you might add a couple of flowers or something else in there. Um, but this is going to work pretty well for me. I've also decided I'm going to do like a landscape orientation rather than a portrait. So I can't really trace it because I don't have three hands. So I'm not going to be able to record that part. But uh, I'm going to make it happen. I'm just going to magic it on now. All right, after you're done tracing it, it should look something like this. And we're going to transfer that over to our drawing board. All right, so I'm going to show you another real, another little trick real quick. Uh, so let's say on mine, I've got a pretty decent composition. It's taking up a fair amount of space. I think it's good to go. But let's say you had kind of a dinkier flower on here. Let's say your flower is only this big. It's not taking up a lot of space. It's not going to make a very good composition. So let's say you're in that situation. There's another trick you can do. Uh, you can make a smaller proportional box on your viewfinder. When you do that, it's kind of the same idea uh, that we did for the enlargement. All you have to do is make sure that the corners are on those diagonals and you can put the box anywhere. So I can do this. From here I have to go straight down. Everything also has to be really square to the edges. It's not going to work if you are uh, going at weird angles, all wonky like this. It's going to throw everything off. 
So be really careful about getting everything square. Make sure the edges of the uh, ruler are parallel to the edges of the sheet. And remember, corners have to be on the diagonals here. All right, so now this smaller box here, because the corners are on the diagonals, it's proportional to the bigger box that we drew it inside of, the whole viewfinder. It's also proportional to our format that we drew on our paper. Okay, so then we could transfer what's in this smaller box here into here and make it bigger. Um, we just want to ignore everything that's outside here and just make the picture in the center of the viewfinder that size. So that's another way you can um, kind of adjust your, your zoom, I guess, uh, so that it fits uh, properly and it's still proportional. Um, so yeah, if you have a smaller composition, you kind of get it to fill the whole viewfinder, try that out and uh, just draw what's in here over there. All right, so now I'm going to transfer my sketch. So I'm gonna kind of measure and sight. I'm gonna do dot to dot on all the intersections, try to figure out where everything goes and just kind of work my way through that. Uh, remember, you can't measure directly, so I can't do here to here. It's going to be way too far out that way. Um, but what I can do is kind of figure out where the middle point is here and here. So middle point is about here. Um, another trick you can use if you want. Yeah, let's keep showing you tricks is can make these triangles smaller. This will also help you find the center line for any of these diagonals by connecting these corners. So middle corner to middle corner, middle corner to middle corner. And you can just continue dividing these up as much as you want. Uh, if you've ever used a grid to draw something, it's the same idea just requires no measuring, so that's kind of nice. You do need a straight edge, but you don't have to measure. So if you're not good at measuring and multiplying and doing proportions that way, uh, you can use these methods. And I want to add that again to my drawing as well. All right, so now things are nice and divided up. This would be a good thing to probably try out as a transition from doing that direct same size drawing to an enlargement like this. I'm using a light pencil here so that I can erase my lines out and they won't leave dark marks so I can hide my cheating. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to transfer this over to here. I'm going to time lapse that because uh, we've already covered how to do that pretty extensively. All right, so now I'm going to use all of my triangles and diamonds here uh, to fill in the rough proportions of the flower. So I really just want to worry about the relative sizes and shapes of each part of the flower. I can also look at the shapes that are made by the triangles in the background, uh, in the negative space there, and use those shapes to help lay in the edges of where the flower is and where it meets the background. Uh, I wanna look at all those different shapes and rough them in. And I wanna worry about proportions and shape, and I wanna worry about where each contour line intersects uh, with the triangles that I drew in earlier and try to match that. Uh, so I'm enlarging a little bit so the direct measurement won't work, but I can look at where the halfway points are, where the third of the ways are, where the quarter of the ways are, and use those to kind of measure uh, with a relative measurement rather than a direct one. Um, so I just want to rough in all those shapes. I'm drawing lightly, trying to keep things uh, easy to erase, easy to move around. Uh, I don't even necessarily erase my lines if I make corrections. I just draw a little darker where I want the actual path to be. After this, I'm going to go in and look a little more closely at the contours of the flower and try to get more of the detail and the nuance. I'm going to look directly at the flower when I do that so I can get those actual details. But since my dry erase drawing is actually fairly shaky, 
uh, since everything was moving around, since it's hard to get a lot of detail in there, I'm just worrying about proportions now. So this is kind of going to be a little rough map of where uh, my contour lines are going to be going for the final drawing, but it's not hard, fast rules. I'm just kind of trying to give some guidelines. So I'm going to kind of continue to draw these in and finish up through the stem, and then we'll move on and start focusing a little bit more specifically on the details of the contour lines. So now we just want to lay in the proportions. So we've got that laid in. You can check the proportions the same way you check the drawing laying it on top, except when you check this time, you kind of have to adjust the view by pulling it away or moving it closer and lining it up. So same idea, you just have to kind of adjust it until it's in the right position. So you can check your drawing and then we're gonna go back through, focusing on the flower this time. Um, and draw in the details of the contours. So here we're just blocking in proportion, relative size of everything. We're gonna go back in and really pay attention to those contour lines and block those in. This time we're gonna do it without using the pens to line. So we're just gonna use pencil and watercolor. Uh, so I'm gonna get maybe a slightly darker pencil and relook at all the contour lines using this as a guide. All right, I'm going back in and I'm looking at the flower this time. I'm focusing on the actual flower and I'm trying to draw in the details of all the contour lines. I'm going in with a little bit darker pencil, make my lines a little more dark and permanent. Um, I'm going a little slower, and I'm really trying to pay attention to the details and nuance of each edge. Uh, I also want to adjust any placement here. If anything looks wonky from the original proportions I laid out, I should kind of adjust it and fix it. I don't do as much of that as I should, uh, while I'm doing this and it gets a little tricky to replicate what I'm seeing later on So my advice would be to take the time to actually like fix what's going on instead of trying to make it fit uh, What you drew earlier also like figure out the angle uh, that you're looking at your subject from and try to stick to that uh, If your head's moving around a lot, it's gonna look different every time you look at it so try to figure out exactly where you're at and uh, How to get that back, back to that position whenever you're looking at it? Um, all right, so yeah, just roughing in the contour edges and then we'll move on to the watercolor. Next, I'm gonna go in and add watercolor. I'm speeding this up quite a bit because we've already covered this pretty extensively. I'm gonna start in with a basic wash. I'm just gonna kind of, um, I'm actually just wetting the paper my water's a little dirty, so it's got a little color to it. Uh, but after I wet the paper, I'm going in with a basic wash. I'm just laying down kind of the backing color uh, to each petal. So I'm looking at each petal. I'm thinking, what's the lightest color I see in each petal? And I'm laying that in first. I want to work from light to dark with my watercolors. Uh, so I want to add the lightest tones first and then build up the darker tones on top. So the stem's pretty dark all the way through, so I laid that in pretty dark and thick. Uh, there's a little bit of shadow on the underside. I'll come and add that later. And now I'm hitting the lighter parts of the leaves. Uh, so now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to add a little more color. So these petals have a lot of kind of different colors to them. There's a lot of yellow into orange, a lot of browns, and some purples and reds. Uh, so I'm kind of adding color where I see it, just kind of dipping a little bit in. You can uh, add color on. Um, if you add too much, you can pull it off by wiping your brush clean and then going back over it, it'll start to pull color back off. Um, you can also add a little water and kind of scrub the color off even after it dries. So you can lighten a little bit. Uh, if you do that too much, if you're too rough on your paper, it's going to start to make little uh, paper boogers uh, that are going to kind of get on there and ruin the quality of the paper as well. So you got to be gentle with it, but you do have a little bit of room for scrubbing things off. So I'm kind of adding those light colors in first, and then I'm gonna go back in and add some shadow tones and some texture. I kind of do this all at once uh, as I'm working this, but I would recommend maybe starting with those shadow tones, getting them laid in first, and then adding the texture and any color uh, or grady gradation, any gradients uh, to the light areas where you have the curve, and then you have a gradual transition of the value. 
Um, so yeah, I just kind of worked my way through. My general strategy is to find a color that is kind of missing uh, or a value that's kind of missing. Uh, try to mix that with my watercolors and then add that to uh, the area I'm looking at. And then I kind of look around for other places on the flower um, where uh, that color is also present. And then I try to add it to those areas as well. I try to be economical with my color and kind of move it to all the places it needs to go uh, at the same time. Uh, conversely, you can mix a lot of different colors and have them laid out and go from one color to another and just kind of work an area. Um, that gets a little complex uh, as far as having a bunch of colors out and mixing them all. Um, but I think that is maybe in the long run a better way to do it and a smarter way to do it. Um, I'm trying to keep this uh, watercolor to like somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. So I'm not going to get too overboard on this, uh, but um, that's kind of the idea. You can see I'm adding texture here as well as some of those shadow shapes. What I'm really looking at is my color, which is kind of a uh, slightly desaturated purple, uh, kind of a nice shadow tone. And I'm looking at where I see it in my flower and trying to add it on to those spots. Uh, and then I'll change the shadow tone, the dark tone slightly. I might add more blue, I might add more brown, add that where I see it, and then apply it to any other areas that have similar sort of tones. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same because again, you can wet the uh, brush and blend it in. So you can kind of build up the colors gradually, um, but you don't want to put it somewhere it doesn't belong. Uh, if you do, you can dab it off with a paper towel if you're quick, or you can um, wet your brush and kind of scrub it off if you are gentle. Uh, you can't abuse that too much, but you can use it a little bit. Uh, so same kind of idea. I want to maintain my lights. Um, I can't really go back on my highlights and lighten them, so I want to kind of protect them and be careful. Um, I can slowly build up my shadow tones and my dark areas, so the preference is kind of to do that, because if you make a mistake while you're building it up slowly, it's not a big deal. It's only slightly off. Uh, but if you go in with a real dark color or a strong color um, and you lay it in and make a mistake, it's going to stick out quite a bit. So um, kind of building things up slowly, I think, is the way to go, especially in the beginning. Uh, once you get a little more proficient, you can be a little more bold with it. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably most of what I got to say. Uh, I did all of this without adding any uh, temporary gouache, so uh, no correction fluid for this one. Um, I think it's pretty decent for an hour and a half. Uh, I do really want to keep working on it and try to fix it, uh, but I'm trying to keep it uh, to a reasonable amount of work for a kind of an intro uh, watercolor. So yeah, uh, continuing to build up those dark tones. I'm kind of going in and layering them. Uh, as I look at my flower, I see where the areas are darker. I'm also working kind of throughout the afternoon, so my light's been shifting, uh, but I'm trying to get it accurate to what I'm seeing. Um, so it's getting darker and darker and I feel like I'm really chasing more and more shadows. Uh, I think that's a good, another good reason not to work too long on, on these things um, or maybe to consider taking a photograph. The photograph is nice uh, to have as a reference because it's not going to shift like your head's going to be. Your head will be looking from slightly different places every time you look probably, but the, the photograph, the vantage point stays the same. Also, the light's not going to change if it changes time of day or uh, the lighting situation changes for whatever reason. Uh, if the clouds roll in and it gets kind of hazy, uh, it's not going to change. So it's nice to have a photo. Um, it's better, I think, to work from life. That's kind of uh, more of a challenge and better training maybe. Uh, but the photo is nice to reference just to, just to make sure you're not going crazy, that your subject isn't shifting around, that the light's not changing, um, just to reference and have like some firm uh, idea of reality there. All right, so um, I'm pretty much done with this. I'm cleaning up my uh, guidelines here, and uh, I think that is going to be uh, it for this one. Um, so here's our finished product, and thank you for watching. I hope that this was useful, um, and I will see you next time.